Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw. I'm here aboard Ponance Le Commandant Charcot, and I'm here with the captain, Captain Patrick Machesso, who is, we, as you can tell, we're on the bridge. Uh, so we're going to talk about this incredible ship. It's really an advancement uh, uh, that, that is, is yet to be surpassed, and where they're going to go and what they've already done. So we're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Captain, first of all, thank you. It's, it's been wonderful. Here we are on the bridge. It's a wonderful place. And um, tell us a little bit about the name, uh, Commandant, uh, Le Commandant Charcot. Who was Charcot? Charcot was, uh, first of all, a uh, doctor. Right. Uh, he started uh, his career as a doctor. And he was uh, also a sportif because he won uh, several um, gold medals in Olympic Games okay. and uh, sail. Uh, 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 topics or uh, uh, how do you call it? Sail, uh Sa sailing contests and what yes, races? Yes, sailing yes. races. And in fact, I think he 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 built a little sailboat to begin. But he ended up becoming a doctor, even though he really didn't want to. Right? Yes. Um, and his father wanted him to be a doctor because his father was a doctor. Right. And when his father, but he has a passion for the sea. Right. And when his father passed away, he really he was attracted by the sea and to discover the the polar region. So he started to. Um, to um, build uh, t one ship and another, another ship later on and to start some expedition to Antarctica where he spent a, a full winter in Antarctica with his ship uh, and then in uh, Greenland as well. And then of course the, the, inf the, the, the sad part about this is unfortunately he died in a ship track in Iceland, right? That's correct. Unfortunately in uh, 1936 uh, uh, when they were sailing away from Reykjavik, uh, Iceland uh, they have been cut by a very strong storm and they run aground and all, everybody uh, died except one crew members. That was it, but he did not su survive. And, and a lot of the Ponant ships are named after famous uh, Arctic, Antarctic explorers, right? That's correct, yeah. All the, uh, what we call the Explorer series vessel, uh, are the name of um, a French explorer, uh, which are, uh, yes, uh, sailing all around the vessel to uh, to discover the, the world. Yeah, the, exactly, the whole world. Now, but this, this ship is another cut above. It's, it's a different kind of vessel. It's designed really for Antarctica and Arctic. And let's talk a little bit about this unique vessel because it is a what they call a polar class or PC2, which is one of the highest classes. Nobody approaches that, right? That's correct. This is the first uh, vessel in the world with a PC2 class. You have a scale from PC1, which is the highest uh, rank, uh, to PC6, and uh, all the nuclear icebreaker are PC1. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a Russian nuclear icebreaker that is PC1, yes. and you're the next in line, right? Exactly, exactly. This is uh, yeah, the first vessel with a conventional propulsion, which means non-nuclear, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, the the, uh, the most powerful. Uh, icebreaker vessel with this uh, non-nuclear. Non yeah, so it's the first passenger vessel really, although yeah. I guess they, they do some passengers on the, the Russian uh, icebreaker too. But you said something, uh, conventional power, but it's really not all that conventional because you are one of the first ships to use uh, liquid national gas and hybrid electric, right? That's correct. This is the only vessel which is combined the three type of energy, which means diesel, natural gas, and uh, electric from the battery. Mm -hmm. And uh, th we use the most uh, advanced technology in order to uh, uh, minimize our impact on the environment and to uh, use uh, LNG uh, gas, but also the, the purpose to have a battery. For example, where we were um, alongside uh, in a port a few days ago, we were able to stop all the diesel generator. And you just plug in, right? And no, and we use the battery. Oh, use the battery at that yeah, point. There's okay, no, right. no emission okay. uh, for a few hours. Uh, and uh, so it's uh, very clean. Yeah, so it's a very sustainable ship. Uh, and, and what else? I know that throughout the ship you have very much focused on sustainability, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. For example, we. Um, uh, there is no plastic bottle on board this vessel. We produce our fresh water from the water mm -hmm. and with some uh, filter. This water is uh, um, uh, good to drink and we put the, this water in a glass bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, and this glass bottle we are able to, um, to clean them and to wash them. So there is a recycling. 
So there's no. So, so at, the the re at the restaurants too, they're going to serve the water, right? That's correct. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can get sparkling and you can get flat. Right? Exactly, and uh, we're drinking it for lunch this uh, today. It was very good. It was fine. It was wonderful. Yeah. And of course, the lunches are very good, as I keep saying in other interviews. That it, it's probably the only uh, expedition ship. It is the only expedition ship that has an Alain Ducasse restaurant, uh, and it's it, that's pretty amazing, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We all the menu uh, are set up by Alain Ducasse himself. Yeah. He came a few days ago on board uh, to make sure to set up uh, uh, everything and to check the quality uh, of the food which are served on board and to make sure we are at the highest uh, level uh, of quality we're getting. Uh, and how, how do you keep your figure having to eat Alain Ducasse food for so long? I have to uh, go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the yeah. gym, let me tell you that, after a week here. Yeah. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, now, you are heading now, eventually you'll get down to Antarctica in November, right? Yes, we start our season uh, November 1st uh, from Punta Arenas, uh, and we will heading. Uh, the first uh, cruise will be uh, on the western part of the peninsula, going really uh, much further south than we go Which usually. Is what you can do because of your PC class, right? Exactly. We, I mean, the, the main difference with this vessel, instead, uh, our playground uh, usually is uh, surrounded with water mixed with ice. But with, ve with this vessel, we will be surrounded by ice only. Mm -hmm. And we will use the ice to, uh, to have some activities on the ice with the guests. Okay. Yeah to work on the ice, to do some uh, scientific um, uh, workshop. Uh, uh, to and this is, a, we, have, we should have mentioned, this is a scientific ship, right? Exactly. I mean, this ship has been built um, with uh, some uh, wet lab and dry lab. And there is some, uh, already, already some equipment uh, with used to be used for the scientific. Uh, and uh, any uh, scientific is welcome during any trip. Yeah, it's great, and you can, you, as guests, you can participate a little bit in these scientific experiments. So, how long are you down in Antarctica for? I will uh, be in Antarctica myself for one month, right. and after uh, my colleague will come, uh, we do two months, two months. Okay, and then the, the season for Antarctica ends in one March. The season ends in the end of March, mm -hmm. and after the, the ship is coming to Arctic for the summer season. Well, that's the big thing. So you, you are going to be going up to Ar the Antarctic, and you'll be doing uh, Greenland, I think, and maybe uh, Northwest Passage, I understand. Things yeah, like we start uh, the season in May in the uh, east coast of Greenland. We go quite north. Then uh, June, east part of Svalbard. Uh, Spitsbergen, mm -hmm. and then uh, July, August, North Pole. That's the biggest thing, yes. North Pole. So you got four cruises, I believe, up there to the North Pole, which I don't think anybody else does, right? That's correct, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, with uh, such a luxury uh, vessel, uh, it ha never had happened before. No, definitely. not at all. No. And if you think, oh, how, how are you going to get there? The fact is, they've already done it. He's already done it. So tell us a little bit about that, because just a few weeks ago, you did a, a test run. Uh, no passenger, well, not passengers, but no uh, guests, no, no paying guests. You had scientists and all kinds of people, and you were testing out a lot of different things, right? Yeah, the purpose was we call a dry run. So, um a cruise uh, to the North Pole to make sure we can test all the technical aspects of the soul. She was sure there was no defect and uh, she's capable to reach North Pole. And in fact, we were able to uh, go there uh, much faster than we were expected. That's what I heard. It's, not, it's, it's about 600 plus nautical miles, right, to get from, I think you were in, uh, uh, was it uh, Svalbard or somewhere there? Yes. Yeah, and then you just went from there, right? Yes, we start from Svalbard and uh, three days after we were in, in the pack, we were already in North Pole. Well, well, yeah. You don't go a straight line, right? You have to zigzag around, or some, around some ice and through some, right? Yeah, because I mean, uh, what is important also to know, we uh, develop um, also uh, uh, routing uh, software huh? in order to we, we download the uh, some uh, ice data uh, on this software and with uh, this software is she's able and this software is able to calculate the best route uh, to go to uh, the North Pole for example according to the high thickness the ice concentration mm -hmm. so it's why we um, we didn't st go straight from Valbar we went much more uh, east at the beginning in order to find some what we call first year's ice which is easier for us to uh, sail through. And, um, and there was also a little bit more opening waters, right. uh, which make, uh, of course... Uh, and I, th I understand that when you got to the North Pole, actually right there, there was wa open water, a little open water, so you couldn't get, get out right there, but you went a, a, a couple miles or something, so you could have a little celebration, right? Exactly, I mean, we were, uh, because there, there was a lot of uh, yeah, open water in the North Pole, 
so uh, <laughs> it was not able to we are not able to disembark physically at the North Pole. Uh, uh, we had to find a big flow which was safe to, uh, to organize our um, celebration. Uh, yeah, you had a little celebration up there and you also tested out some survival gear and things just in case. Uh, I think you had, you know, polar suits and all kinds of things to make sure you, you your guests could survive. I don't think that's ever going to be a problem, but uh, and it all it all worked pretty well, right? Yeah, yeah, we did a, what we call a search and rescue exercise for 24 hours uh, with uh, more than 60 people. Uh, and uh, we had uh, we invite some experts, uh, U.S. Coast Guard, Canadian Coast Guard, Norwegian Coast Guard, uh, and we did um, this exercise with the participation of all five different countries uh, of the Arctic: Russia, uh, Norway, um, Denmark, uh, Greenland, Canada, and USA, uh, to to test our protocol and to see also. Uh, what other solution can be bring if something happened to us? Well, I also also understand you saw some amazing wildlife. I think you had, you had got so a few polar bears got interested in in your ship too on the way up, right? Yeah, despite the fact that the vessel is very uh, massive and big, uh, and maybe uh, we were thinking that uh, we could scare the the, 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 uh, the wildlife due to the fact that the vessel is bre breaking the ice, but uh, not at all. I mean, when we saw a polar bear, we stopped the vessel, and most of the time they came to us. I mean, due to the fact there are a lot of uh, open water, open deck, uh, everybody can be can spread on the open deck and uh, be the witness. Uh, it's like you are watching your National Geographic on the TV, you know? <laughs> That's right, yeah. and you can see that. And you saw some whales as well, I believe, right? Exactly, yeah. We saw a blue whale on the way uh, up. We saw a novel on the way down. Uh, uh, polar bears, uh, seal, yes, yes, yeah. And then, then the other wi bit of wildlife they saw was an American nuclear submarine, if I recall, right? Tell us that story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we spent three days in the North Pole, and the last day we saw uh, a black spot uh, behind the vessel. So uh, with a binocular, we were not sure what it was, but we have um, some uh, good uh, binocular uh, from Swar Swar Swarsky. Swarsky, right? Swarsky yeah. yeah. So I took this one, I saw obviously it was a submarine and our, we called the submarine, nobody answer. And when we left uh, North Pole, we went, uh, we make a small loop to see uh, who was this nomad, right. uh, submarine. And on the way to the submarine, they call us, uh, Le Commandant Charco, Le Commandant Charco, this is a US submarine, please take care <laughs> <Yeah>. of us. <laughs> so you did, yeah, yeah. that was enough of that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we ask, uh, okay, but we didn't uh, hear your name. He said, I cannot tell you. <laughs> It's a secret. Um, now, we're going out to about 90,000 travel advisors. What would you tell them so they can tell their clients about this great ship? Definitely, you know, uh, uh, this ship experience is uh, between uh, what we do uh, actually. It's uh, snorkeling and diving. You know, with uh, our vessel, we are sailing into uh, some open waters with ice, so this is like snorkel activities. Right. But with this vessel, we are doing a, f a real diving experience. We, we go into the ice and we are surrounded uh, with um, 360 degrees all around and the vessel with fact, ice. There's some, some shots, and shots where you are totally enclosed in ice because you're going through it. And I think the other thing is when it gets a little thick, you actually have a second bridge in the stern and you turn around and you basically cut through the ice a little bit with using your azipods, right? Exactly, because this ship is fitted with azipods so the propeller can turn from uh, 360 degrees and uh, in case it's too, uh, the ice is too uh, thick to go forward, uh, we will turn the vessel as you say 180 degrees, we'll turn the azipod also to make sure the propeller is facing the ice, we move to the um, stern bridge uh, right. behind the restaurant and the uh, propeller will um, uh, crutch the, uh, the, the ice uh, in order to make a, a hole into the, the wall of the ice and to pass through. And we were able to pass through a, um, a wall of ice. Uh, the thickness was 15 meters, so which means it's 45 that's feet. That's huge. That's, I mean, that's because not only do you have the, they can crush it, but also this vessel is such strong hull that it basically the weight of the vessel can crush the ice as well. Right? Exactly. But I mean, this maneuver will be used uh, to make sure we can escape from uh, if there is uh, too much, uh, if suddenly we are trapped for any reason in the ice and we cannot uh, move forward. Uh, so this is an emergency, uh, but it's also a good um, for us as a captain. 
it's a good solution to know that it's always possible to uh, find an escape way. Yeah, okay. And you had no problems Safety coming reason. back and forth uh, to the North Pole, right? No, not at all, not at all. Yeah, so everything. Hope you have no problem. For, you got four cruises up in, up in July next year, and believe me, y your clients are going to be amazed if, if they get a chance to get out on this ship. It's only what 200 and how many passengers? Yeah, yeah. The maximum uh, will be 230, and we have uh, more than 20. Uh, uh, expedition guide uh, with uh, different, uh, of course, uh, knowledge. They will conduct some lecture on board. They will take care of the guests ashore, ashore, I mean, on the ice. Uh, we try to uh, organize some small groups, so it's a little bit more uh, individual. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it uh, will be uh, amazing, I think, it's to go. It's an amazing experience. Well, Captain, I want to thank you. Uh, it's been a good little introduction. Sometime I hope to go uh, on a on an Antarctic or Arctic ex expedition with you because this has been a really look at this ship that's going to do that and it is a very different kind of expedition cruise cruise vessel really the highest rated PC2 uh, and the one that has the Ducasse restaurant so you can't really beat that one right? Yes I mean we will go where the other ship cannot go so we will be alone and uh, in a luxurious condition yes absolutely uh, and you yes. won't go hungry so there you go thanks very much and I'm James Schillinglaw from the bridge of Le Commandant Charcot Ponant's brand new luxury expedition vessel. And this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>